Hi folks, this is Dr. Rob Sivers. Uh, I am the carb addiction doc, but I am a practicing physician. I see patients all the time, particularly I see metabolically challenged patients on the diabetic and the obesity side, and a lot of metabolic dysfunction in between. And one of the things that we're seeing um, now toward the end of 2023 is a massive uptick in the number of patients who have COVID. I myself and my wife also from our travels have had COVID. So I'm going to give you as a physician, my opinion, my opinion and the way I manage myself because I am fairly metabolically healthy. How do I manage my own family when it comes to COVID? And yes, there's going to be a lot of controversial nature here, but I think there's some very important points here. Number one, awareness. Be very, very aware that COVID is still out there. And it's important that you yourself don't want it if you can avoid it. It's just miserable. It sucks. Even though it's not horrible, it's miserable um, just to have it and to have to isolate. Secondly, if you're a human being that actually cares about other people, I know there are a lot of you out there that don't, but if you're a human being that cares about other people, think of passing it on. It's a highly, highly contagious bug. And you don't want to spread it to the people around you. So... Try to protect yourself, have an awareness of your environment and try not to get yourself into a situation where you know there's going to be COVID around and protect yourself. I'm not talking about wearing masks and I'm not talking about all the bullshit that we went through. Masks do help. Yes, masks do help. They do decrease it. But to go to the point of wearing a mask all the time like that we did, I think that's over the top. That's over the top. But um, do protect yourself when you're in a crowd because you're going to travel, you're going to get it. The second thing to understand is there are three different major viruses right now circulating. All have the same problems. Influenza, flu, RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, and it's happening in adults as well as kids, and then variants of COVID. So try to get hold of some COVID tests and have them at home. And if you do get sick, even if it's a trivial sickness, test yourself. Test yourself for COVID. So we have test kits at home. We still have them from way back. Get a COVID test. It's 20 bucks at a store now. But get a COVID test and test yourself and make sure you don't have it. The next thing that I'm going to call bullshit on, okay? And I'm, I'm doing, doing this in the early days of COVID. Everybody was taking magnesium and zinc and quercetin and uh, all of ivermectin and all of these Things that people thought would reduce that risk. And people swear by it. Swear by it. And yes, there is some background science principle to it. But if you are metabolically fairly healthy, if you're on a ketogenic diet, you're not eating carbohydrates, and you don't have a massive inflammatory situation, and we're not talking about those folks, you don't need all that crap. You don't need that whole COVID protocol. You don't need it. Because it doesn't make that much of a difference. It doesn't change whether you get the disease or not. Early testing is important if you think you have it. And then in my opinion, if you test positive, particularly in the first 24 hours, and most people know they're sick within the first 24 hours. You know what? My throat doesn't feel so good. I'm a little headache here. I'm a little warm. I'm a little fatigued. Test yourself. And if you're not positive, maybe test yourself the second day. But you're not going to like what I'm about to say now. However, the most effective treatment for COVID is to take Paxlovid early. Paxlovid. I don't care if you're high risk or low risk. Paxlovid terminates or aborts the severity of the disease. And if you get it early, you can do that over the course of three to four days. I'll typically take Paxlovid for 48 hours when I know I'm COVID positive and it's gone. I still have it on hand because the day, the first day that I don't take the, the Paxlovid, it can resurge if you've got a heavy uh, dose of COVID into you or if you've delayed the onset of taking the medication. But Paxlovid is still a drug that, oh, but what about this? What about? I can tell you that the side effects of Paxlovid are way less than ivermectin. So don't, don't come with your bullshit and your beliefs. And if you, you want to leave this channel right now, leave goodbye. But if you're healthy, that is a great way 
to reduce the severity of the disease. Do you have to take it? No. Can you endure the disease? Yes. Is it going to be worse? Yes. So you don't have to take it, but it is the single most effective therapy. And then you don't have to worry about all the other ancillary bullshit because some po politician said that you shouldn't do Paxlovid or somewhere along the line, something's going to crawl out of your butt and bite you in the butt. Throw all those, that, that conspiracy nonsense out the drain. The next thing about, is about the vaccine. No, 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 no. In my opinion, you do not need a COVID vaccine or a COVID booster if you are metabolically healthy. Unless you've got some radical risk factor. You're a transplant patient. You're a brittle diabetic. You've got a profoundly suppressed immune system. But for regular Joe like me, do not get vaccinated again. That is why I push the Paxlovid, not because I don't push the vaccine. A lot of us like me were forced to get vaccinated in the early, early days. I've not been vaccinated again. I won't be vaccinated again. So that's my, again, I, this is my opinion. This is my opinion. And then for me, the single most important thing, whether you're going to take Paxlovid or just endure the symptoms, COVID is a thrombotic disease. So is flu, so is RSV. They cause inflammation of the blood vessels, those viruses, and they increase your risk of clotting. So even though you're perfectly healthy, there's no contraindication, put yourself on a baby aspirin. If you want to take some Advil for headaches, or whatever, those are fine. But put yourself on a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory thromboxane AT inhibitor, big words, put yourself on a baby aspirin for around three weeks. Three weeks when you test positive for COVID or those other viruses. Why? Because even as you're coming out of this, you will still have some fatigue. You will still have the risk of clotting. And one of the things, so that aspirin reduces your risk of a fatal blood clot or of developing blood clots in the legs. And we see even young athletes get inflammation of their heart, get inflammation in their blood vessels and drop dead. We had an anesthesiologist a little bit ago who died in the operating room from an em embolus about a month after COVID. Please don't take that risk. Put yourself on a baby aspirin through COVID. Now, fatigue is a very common problem. And I never thought that fatigue was an issue for me. I know when I'm tired, but tired isn't fatigue. But this most recent time that I had COVID, for a few weeks afterwards, I was flat as a pancake. And I'm busy. I'm working. I'm seeing patients. I'm not infected with COVID. I'm testing negative. I was just flat. I couldn't get energy going. And folks, this is an anecdote. So there's no. I'm not going to give you tons of science behind this. But this really worked for me. I have this stuff. I have the ketone IQ. And every morning, just to get myself, my ass out of bed, I have my first cup of coffee. I chase it with a ketone IQ. And I've been on that every morning, as long as I'm on the aspirin, I take my aspirin, I take my fish oil, I take my ketone IQ and I take my coffee. That is my morning ritual. And I can tell you the couple of mornings where I didn't take the ketone IQ, now maybe a placebo effect, I was more, way more profoundly fatigued, dragging, than when I did take it. Now it costs money. You decide. Am I promoting it? Yes, I am. But I also personally take it. And I took it when I recently had COVID. So I know it works. It works for me. Try it if you choose to. It is expensive. But it's your choice. And certainly for that little bit of fatigue, when I was beyond the virus, it made a big difference. I know this is going to be a controversial discussion. But the reality is COVID still exists, except in Florida. Um, no, COVID still exists. Mine was brought home from Chicago, so <laughs> it came from, yeah, we won't go down that road. But uh, the point is, it still exists, it's still out there, and you can't differentiate unless you test between the other viruses. Take care of yourself. You, you're on a ketogenic diet to live a long time. Don't screw this up with a blood clot or some other silly reason. And, and um, if you want to, leave comments, argue with me, fight with me, tell me that I'm wrong. Totally fine. This is a forum for discussion. But keep it simple, have an awareness, and manage your awareness. Till next time, I am the Carb Addiction Doc.